rain's coming down i hope you can hear me as long as i've been into porsche cars and buying porsche cars which is the best part of 10 years i've always said if you're buying a porsche car and you're worrying about miles per gallon then you probably bought the wrong car so here i am making a video about increasing the mpg in your porsche car which yeah it sounds a little bit hypocritical i get that but there's a very good reason why. But before we do that, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss a single thing. You can also follow the Porsche Network on Instagram and on Facebook. Now, as some of you may know, back in January, I bought a Porsche Cayenne, this one here. It's a 958 2013 model as my daily driver. But at the time, I wasn't really doing a lot of miles per day. I was probably doing about five miles per day. So fast forward six months, my working situation has changed. Whereas previously I was doing maybe five miles a day, now I'm doing minimum 40, sometimes up to 60. And that's not motorway miles either. So I'm getting probably about 32, 33 miles per gallon, sometimes around about 30 in fact. And I'm spending a lot more on fuel than I actually want to be. So before I throw in the towel and sell the car, I wanted to try one of these chip tuning boxes. Uh, this is made by a company called Race Chip. I'll put a link in the description below this video. But according to the race chip website on this particular car it's going to give me 15 percent better uh, mpg or fuel economy um, it'll increase torque it'll increase performance while obviously saving money and fuel at the same time so it's got to be worth a try i paid i think it was like 140 pounds i paid for this it's a diy installation it comes with all the instructions all the harnesses that you need to get up and running so that's what we're going to do in this video and actually it's worth me mentioning it's not just suitable for the cayennes but it's also suitable for the Panameras, the Macans, and even the newer turbo version Caymans, Boxsters and 911s, which have turbo engines. So let's see what's in the box. Box. So this is the chip itself. And we've got electrical connections there. So that's obviously we'll plug one end in there. In this box, we've just got cable ties. Seems like an awful big box for cable ties. And then, We've got the wiring harness and then installation guide, which seems quite large, in fact. Oh, well, let's give it a try. But one thing I'm going to do before I fit the race chip is to use the iCarsoft POR version 1.0 kit to scan the engine system, first of all, to see if there are any engine codes within the system. And then we'll do the same afterwards, after we fit it. Read DTC. So we've got a positive there. We're seeing no fault code found. Take off the engine cover. It should just pop off, pretty easy. So the first step is to find the common rail connection plug, which is this one here. So we just put a little screwdriver in there. There we go. So now we need to look at the harnesses that have been included and we need to connect the part which is labeled A. So there's A. Oh, where's A? This is A here. Oh, well, that's clever. I oh, guess only one of them is going to fit. It's going to be this one, I believe. No, it's not. It's going to be this one. So that one fits in there like that. And then the other end of this wire here connects to the plug which we've just removed. So that so far is pretty easy. And then we've got two more connectors and this end here. Okay, so next up, we've got to find the, uh, what is it, we've got to find the turbo boost pressure sensor. So, should be, ah, right, I can see it right there. As we come into the engine bay, that's the electrical connection for the sensor itself. You see the white sticker on there? That's the pressure sensor. Now, removing this is actually pretty easy. You just need to press the one end of the sensor in and you should be able to release it like that. So then we need to find connection B, which is these here. And I guess it's the only one which will fit. So it'll be this bigger one. So plug that in, in its place. And then the other connection will plug into where, which was well, the bit which previously went into the, uh, the sensor. There we go. So that's all plugged in now. It's a, it's a bit fiddly, the wires are a little bit all over the place. I might need to uh, sort that out. And then what we've got to do is unplug this deactivation plug. So that's just a blank, I would assume. And we've got to plug in the actual race chip. 
so that's plugged in there nicely nice and secure all right so now we need to get into the car and switch the ignition on and then we need to start the engine make sure all of the warning lights go out which they have done and coming back into the engine bay you will see the race chip now has a green light on it which basically mean it is receiving power and I th i'm fairly sure that means that it is functioning as desired and as uh, as it's supposed to do so before we take the car out for a drive again we've got the por version 1.0 kit plugged in and we're just going to go through and select our vehicle and now see if it's giving us any fault codes with the new part installed um, so the engine system read dtc's no fault code found that's very good news now we can take it out for a drive and so the last thing for us to do really is to sort out all of this wiring i may need to unclip and reclip connections and then fasten and secure the actual uh, box unit somewhere suitable and safe inside the engine bay So I was really struggling, in fact, to find anywhere to put the, uh, the race chip unit. This is where I've settled on. Obviously, we need to clip all of the cable ties. I first of all removed this panel from this side. It couldn't find anywhere. Um, then removed this panel from this side. The only place I could find really was actually quite secure in this little area here. Um, but obviously, I've had to fashion my own cable ties because the ones provided weren't long enough. So it's really just about snipping these off and then putting everything back together and then we'll see if we can tidy up these wires as well. So this is hopefully the final revision. We've got cable ties running along the engine here and then we've snipped everything and that is nicely laid down there. So I'm hoping that um, I'm gonna be able to first of all get the engine cover back on. One thing I would say is I don't really think that the cable ties which were supplied were sufficient enough. Still got a few panels that we haven't put back on. Just wanna do a test run for now. And then we'll put all of the plastic side panels back on and then we should be good to go and uh, do a test drive. Test drive. 34.2 is my current MPG, which is a little bit better than I thought, but that is over a course of uh, 864 miles and a ride time of 31 hours according to my trip computer. So it's now a couple of weeks later and the shorter 40 to 50 mile daily trips that I've been doing before the race chip was fitted was giving me an MPG of around about 31 uh, MPG. And I've been monitoring this actually now for a couple of weeks and I'm pleased to say that I have actually noticed an increase. According to this now we're looking at 36.3 MPG and that's on those shorter trips of around about 40 to 50 miles per day. And as my sole purpose of buying this device was to actually to save fuel, I haven't really been putting my foot down uh, in order to see if you know there's, a, there's an increase in uh, torque or increase in power there. So for the completion of the video, well, let's see if it does give us that around about extra 33 brake horsepower or 88 Newton meters of torque. And sure, it would be better if I had a rolling road to actually view those real world figures. Uh, but I don't have a rolling road unfortunately, so I'm gonna have to rely on my highly unqualified experience to test it. And let's just see if it feels quicker when I put my foot down. So here goes. Oh yeah. I can't feel that. That does feel quicker. <laughs> pretty good in fact. I'm gonna run out of road. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that actually. Um, there are five, there are five, there's like a rotary uh, switch on the side of the, the race chip and it allows you to change the settings on it depending on what you're looking to get out of the chip. So you can change it where it's geared towards better fuel economy or you can change it so it's geared towards better, um, better performance really. So it's, it's, would I recommend it? I think for the price of it, £140, then I'm going to have to say yes I would. Over the long term, it's actually it's actually going to save you money. But if you're not looking to save money on fuel, then it'll give you better performance if that's what you're looking to get out of it. I don't know how many people would be on a, a Porsche Cayenne, but you know, if you had a 911, a Cayman or Boxster uh, with the newer turbo engines, then you know maybe with those cars you probably would be looking to get more performance or torque out of one of these boxes. And in the right car, you can get up to 20% better fuel economy or up to 56 brake horsepower that's an additional to what you already get of course there is an argument of should i get a remap instead of one of these chip boxes 
and I can I can see how that's a reasonable argument to have but I think they do cost a little bit more I think they do uh, I got a quote for one of my cars it was like 300 pounds so it's more than double the cost and the beauty of this chip is that it can be removed and put back in as and when you want it probably takes about 10 minutes once you know exactly what you're doing to be put back to standard so let's say you're putting it in a car which has a warranty and you need to get your car booked in for some warranty work you can just take the chip back out and then put it back in once you've had the work done you wouldn't be able to do that with a remap I take into consideration that these boxes probably aren't for everybody you know you might prefer to get a remap whatever uh, but if you were interested in one then as I say click the link below this video it'll take you directly to the race chip website where you can configure the chip which is best for yours for your vehicle and your needs within that vehicle I'm probably gonna have another play on with this uh, rotary switch and gear it more towards fuel economy rather than performance I don't need performance out of a daily driver like this I've got the 911s and the Caymans for that so if you have stuck with me to the end I really appreciate that if you can go ahead and click that like button and also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and make sure to click the bell so you don't miss anything I'll see you on the next episode on the Porsche Network